slowly falling victim to technological advancements. You see, we live in a world where things are constantly changing and advancements are always being reached. These advancements allow us to talk to someone across the globe with the touch of a button. Yet teens have decided to use that button to put others down. It's cowardly acts such as this that have created more people willing to watch bullying and partake in it than those who are brave enough to stand up. Times have changed. You see, bullying mutated from schoolyard teasing to an arsenal of non-stop torture. And now with 93% of teens online, 73% of teens on social networking sites, and 63% of teens texting every day, the internet has become a battlefield. And while those who are bullied are 1.9 times more likely to commit suicide, it's baffling that one in four teachers see nothing wrong with bullying and will only intervene 4% of the time. It's no wonder why over two-thirds of students believe that schools respond poorly to bullying, with a high percentage of students believing that adult help is infrequent and ineffective. Now that bullies not only dictate school, but cyberspace, it's harder than ever for teens to separate themselves from hateful words. 160,000 teenagers miss school every day for fear of being bullied. This is one of the reasons why it's important to remember that not everything needs the eye. You see, we as humans tend to think that we always know what's going on with someone. But people are like televisions. They may be mute, but there's still something going on behind the screen. And the person who seems to smile every day, well, they might not have it as good as you would think. I guess what I'm trying to say is that sometimes the people you least expect to be victims are. Which is why it's important to remember that there are certain aspects of life that are imperative, such as a sense of belonging, which can be easily met with a simple smile, hello, how are you doing, or are you okay? JFK once said, It's not about what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. So why don't we take JFK's advice? It's not about what your school or what somebody else can do for you, what you expect of them. It's what you expect of yourself. It's what you can do for those who don't have a voice, for those that are being bullied. For every post, there's a repost. For every tweet, there's a retweet. And for every message, there's a reply. So I don't want to hear that there's no opportunity to change what has suddenly become a sort of epidemic. Because as long as cyberspace is alive, so is change. My name's Kristen Grom, and I propose that we rebuild what others and our peers have broken. Bullying ends now. Bold over.